Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. Welcome to part four of my Ghostbusters movie toy retrospective and comparison battle. Yeah, that's right, part four. You know, if you watched parts one, two, and three, uh, thanks a lot. I'm, I hope you really enjoyed it, you know? It took me a long time to make these videos. Uh, I had I planned this for a long time. I actually wrote like a, a bunch of this information way back in October of 2020, and I didn't get to start shooting it until late January 2021, so. You know, it took a while to finally get there. I was staring at my notebook for months just thinking, I gotta make this video. I love the Ghostbusters. I gotta make this video. I gotta do it. And now, I finally did it. And after this, it's done. We only have four more categories to go. Yeah, four. Sure seems like a lot, and it is. But I promise you, this isn't going to take as long as part three, I hope. That, that video was ridiculously long. There was so much equipment and accessories to talk about. It just took forever. I never thought I was going to make it through, but... I did, man, and now we're here in part four. So, here are the final four categories. Category 13, side characters. Category 14, small ghosts. These are the ghosts that show up in like the montages and just kind of random spots throughout the movies. Uh, category 15, big ghosts. For me, these are like the popular ghosts, the franchise ghosts. They're Slimer, Stay Puft, the Terror Dogs, and I don't care what anybody says, the Scolari Brothers. I love the Scolari Brothers. And, you know, I think that they should have deserved more attention because, come on, you have, like, two really big ghost-busting scenes on the big screen, right? You got Slimer in the first movie, and then you got the Scolari brothers, and that's it. Like, these guys need uh, a lot more attention. That's what I think. And then finally, Category 16, the Major Manifestations. These are, like, the boss ghosts, you know? They're the main, the main ghosts. You got Gozer, the Gozerian, and you got Vigo, the Carpathian. So... Let's get started. Category 13, side characters. Maddie released four side characters. They were Dana as Zool, Lewis as Vince Clortho, Walter Peck, and The Rookie. Diamond released seven side characters. They were Dana, Lewis, Janine, Walter Peck, Lewis and Ghostbusters 2 gear, uh, Janos, and Baby Oscar. Hasbro, so far, has only released two side characters, uh, Dana and Lewis. All right, so here's where I'm going to lose some Ghostbuster collecting cred. Um, these are the only side characters I have. Um, I used to have pretty much all of them except for Janos. I never picked that one up because um, because at that point in time when that came out, I was kind of get like coming off of the Diamond Select line a little bit. Like it was almost at the end, and I was just kind of like, ah, I, I don't need Janos. And, um, and I sold, I sold them all. I just kind of thought like, you know, I, I kept on buying all these figures. Like I'd buy Janine or I'd buy Walter Peck in the diamond line and I'd open them up and I'd put the diorama piece with my diorama and I'd put the figures in a box in my closet and never really display them. And then eventually I just reached a point where I was looking in my closet and I was like, I have never had these on display. Like I bought these, I paid $24 for these you know, minus the diorama worth, just to store them in my closet. So, you know, that was a bummer. And then eventually at some point, um, I did I did used to actually um, display my Maddie figures a lot. I actually liked them um, when they came out. I liked them, but uh, again, after a while, I started to store them. And once the Maddie line was over and I was kind of, kind of weeding out my collection a little bit, I just kind of chose that some of them uh, you know, I just didn't need them anymore. So, but I will, I have pictures here. So I am going to talk about everything. It just, unfortunately, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details about everything. First up, we got Lewis Tully. And Lewis, of course, was played by Rick Moranis. And you know, he's hilarious. He's one of the funniest things about Ghostbusters. And um, so Lewis showed up in all three lines. He showed up in Maddie Collector, Diamond, and Hasbro. So obviously he's a very, uh, you know, important character and people love him. People always want Lewis action figures. And, um, you know, this Maddie one has some pros, some cons. So let's get into it. First off, his shirt is the uh, the most accurate out of all three of them because he's got the, the stripes coming down. You know, you're not going to see that with Hasbro. Are you kidding? You think they're going to paint stripes on the t-shirt? No. I think they did a really good job with the likeness. Now his face, you know, it's kind of like cartoony or like I said when I was talking about the uh, the Peter Venkman figure, it's almost kind of like a caricature of the character. 
But there are certain aspects about it that really do look like Rick Moranis, you know, like there are hints in there that just really makes it look like him. So I think that's great. The body, however, is not the best. Um, there's no, like, none of the Maddie figures have any articulation in the shirt that's for, in the chest. That's fine. But he is, like, a little stiff. There's something that's very stiff about him. I feel like his proportions are kind of awkward or strange. Like, his arms are too big. Because, you know, he's smaller than a regular size Ghostbuster figure. And um, it looks like his arms are... His arms are probably as long as a regular Ghostbuster. Yeah. So his arms should be shorter or something. There's just something off about it. They look too big or something. Also his legs. His knee joints are like not in the right spot. Look at that. They like... He has really, really high shins. Like, I, I don't know what's up with that. I think getting this guy to stand, too, is a little weird. There's something about him, like, look how gigantic his feet are. They are extremely long, and he does have ankle uh, articulation, but the feet can't really bend too far forward. See how he's, like, slowly moving back as I moved him like that? So, like, when you're standing him, he's kind of stuck in this kind of position, so you kind of have to hunch him over a little bit to balance him. I mean, I, I guess maybe if he's, like, supposed to be possessed, maybe it kind of makes sense that his arms are kind of sticking out like they are, and you can't really put him down there, down. He's kind of, like, in, a, in an awkward pose for the most part, and you can't really do too much with the arms. But, uh, I don't know. I kind of felt like maybe his design didn't necessarily match the, the design of the other toys. I don't know if you can see that, if you're making that out at all, what I'm, what I'm talking about, but there's something maybe a little different about him compared to the other guys and and like I said look at where his knees are his knees are the exact same place where the uh the Ghostbusters are where he does excel though is in the accessories you know you have the pizza and you know that Lewis scene is just hilarious whenever I see it in the movie I love it I think it's funny he's got a a jar of popcorn but you can't really get him to hold it I couldn't really figure out how to get this situated in here to keep it in place you also have the uh, the terror dog head, and uh, along with his regular head, you also get the colander head, and you know that looks great too. And I think Maddie did a really good job. You know, you look at this, and then you look at the movie, and they match him pretty well. And now we have the Diamond Lewis. And uh, I, I don't know. This one, in my opinion, was, was so off from, you know, when you got the Maddie one and then you went to this one, it was a big drop, especially in the face sculpt. Like, this one, I thought, like, didn't look like Rick Moranis at all. Um, and, you know, if you're looking at this promo shot, he doesn't have the glasses, but the actual figure did have glasses, but it still didn't help. It still didn't really look like Mer Rick Moranis. And, you know, this was one of those figures where, you know... You sit there and you're thinking, you're like, I could have this toy, I don't really like it, it's in my box, not doing anything, or I could use that $10 and go buy something else. So, uh, I took my $10. And finally, we have Hasbro's Lewis Tully, and you know, I really like this one a lot. I think that Hasbro probably did the best Lewis. You know, I think the face here is better than the other uh, Lewis's. Um, even though the Maddie one was good, I think that this one looks more like Rick Moranis. Even more like Rick Moranis. And despite not having the, the striped shirt, you know, it just looks great. Um, the Maddie one is good, but like I said, there's things about the proportions of his body that are... It's just kind of weird. Like, the way that the legs look with the knees all the way up and how the arms are situated on the body. There's just something about him where they try to shrink him down, but they just couldn't shrink everything down... And it just kind of makes him look very weird. Like his torso may be, may be way too thin or something and his arms are gigantic. I don't know. There's something something off about this. And the Maddie one didn't really, like I said, fit in as good with the Ghostbusters. But if you look at uh, this Lewis standing next to Egon here, it's like, you know, he's a smaller toy in this toy line. And they man still managed to make him look correctly proportionate to the Ghostbusters. So that is a step above what Maddie did. 
I just think this looks great. You know, I think it looks just, it looks almost just like Rick Moranis. I think they did a fantastic job with this guy's face. The paint on it, of course, is all very nice and clean. Um, unlike the matty one, they actually have the, the glasses sculpted onto the head instead of trying to add a little uh, glasses. Although I will say that these glasses sure look a lot nicer than the glasses they gave Egon. They should have, they should have used these on him. Why did they do, they should have, why didn't they do that? Egon's glasses, I think, were, like, too clunky or something, but... So, he looks better because he's got the glasses sculpted on his head, and, you know, I just think everything looks fine. The paint looks really good on him. Um, some of the colors might be a little too bright or something. It, like, I don't know what you'd call it here, but, like, the... The brown pants look good, but there's like a hint of white in them that, I, I don't know. It's fine. I think he looks good. And of course, this Lewis comes with the cool colander helmet. And, you know, he doesn't have an extra head. He just has the helmet. You just stick that on his head like so. And I said this in the accessories video. I actually prefer the Matty colander because the, there's more dynamic... Uh, bits and pieces on it like they're sticking off of it like they are in the movie where this one is just kind of flat it doesn't necessarily look like the one in the movie but you know they still it, it still looks good well two out of three companies did an okay job with lewis so how did they do with dana well not the best <laughs> you know i think that the they some of them have done okay but in general i don't know the, the dana barrett figures are just they're just not the best the maddie one uh kind of looks like her but not really the face doesn't really look like sigourney weaver other than they tried to give her somewhat of uh the, the sigourney weaver um like her, her the shape of her face is sort of similar but i don't know the hair looks a lot better than the other companies um but the biggest problem with the maddie figure is that it's more of a statue than it is a toy you know they didn't have the money to articulate this figure which is a bummer so it's a, it's a statue. Like, you either have her sitting on the altar she comes with, or you can pop off her uh, lower torso and legs and make her standing. And, you know, that's that's it. You can twist her at the, at the, you know, at the hips or whatever. And I think you could turn the head, but that's it. Her arms are, like, completely stuck behind her, ba behind her body all the time, just straight down. <clears throat> so... That was a pretty big letdown for everybody who was collecting this line and hoping for a, a Dana figure. The Diamond Dana is just bad. It's just awful. <laughs> the, the face is really bad. The hair looks bad. Um, the way that the gown sits on her body just makes her look like maybe super frumpy or something. Like there's just something about it. It doesn't really conform to her body. So it just kind of looks like like a bag wrapped around your, uh, your action figure. I don't know. The arms are strange and... I, like, could you imagine being Sigourney Weaver and people are coming up to you and they're like, hey, we want to make a toy of you. And you're like, oh, yeah, really? You're going to make a toy? That sounds awesome. And then they give you the toy and it's this thing. Like, how would you feel? You'd be like, this is awful. I can't believe you made me look like this. So, you know, Diamond for me just didn't do a very good job with this. This was a very easy um, uh, figure to cut out of the collection. The Hasbro Dana, to me, is just kind of... It's a mixed bag, you know, some of it is okay and some of it is not the best. Um, I think all the way all the arms come out of the gown is kind of strange. They appear more like tubes than they do like like arms coming out of cloth. Um, again, she's got the weird thing going on with her arm where that part is not connected to this. Like they should have probably just kind of made it like she first appears in the movie where, um, uh, you know, the gown is completely covering her body. Either that, or they should have just, you know, cut it off the arm here and just left the gown wrapped around underneath her armpit and just left this a naked arm. I think that would have probably been better. The color of Dana's gown does not match the one in the movie at all. It's way too red. In the movie, it's pretty orange. So I think, if anything, the best-looking gown color goes to Maddie. I think that they, uh, they did the best with that. If you look at Sigourney Weaver in the film and then you look at this toy... I don't know. The likeness is not the best. You know, there's some things in here that kind of look like her, but then kind of don't. I think I think it's some different angles it looks better than others. Like this, I think, kind of looks closer to her face. 
But then when you look at her like straight on, it just does not really look like her. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's a mix. I think it's probably a better sh uh, stab at her likeness than the other two. But at the same time, they didn't, I don't know. They got the proportions off. I think they made her jaw like way too big for her. And uh, the hair, I think, is just not that great. I think the Maddie hair was better because this kind of appears like too uniform. Um, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing about, it's too uniform and it's too round. It looks like she's got like a giant meatball on top of her head. So like, I don't think there is a huge clear winner or anything like that with Dana. Um, but I think if anything, maybe this does a little better than the other ones, just because you can articulate the whole body and you kind of do have a better likeness of Sigourney Weaver in the face. I don't know. I think uh, every company should have tried a little harder with this. Up next, you have Walter Peck. And Walter Peck was done by both Maddie and Diamond. Hasbro hasn't done him yet, but I bet he'll be there. We'll, we'll see him. The real question is, will they just repaint a chameleon figure or some kind of Marvel Legends suit figure and just pass him off as Walter Peck? Or will they actually make a smaller sculpt so that he's actually in the same uh, scale with the Ghostbusters. We'll see. Walter Peck was played by William Atherton, and although I think William Atherton does a great job in the movie, and you know, Will Walter Peck is a, a good villain and foil for the Ghostbusters, um, he's just not a character that I, I care to have action figures of. You know, like, I just kept on thinking, like, why are they giving me all these human characters? Like, I just want the Ghostbusters, and I want a bunch of ghosts. I just want the Ghostbusters to fight ghosts. But we just kept on, we keep on getting so many humans. So many humans. Give me more ghosts. But, you know, I will say this. Um, both Maddie and Diamond did an excellent job with Walter Peck. Like, they both did a fantastic job of sculpting his face to make him look like William Atherton. The uh, the Maddie version, Walter Peck had the same body as the courtroom Ghostbuster figures, um, same arms, same legs. The only difference is the the top, like the suit jacket. Um, that's different because you know it doesn't have the proton pack straps and uh, the way that the button up shirt underneath and the tie are set up. That's different too. And he's got that awesome head. I mean, he looks like William Atherton. He's he looks fine. And he came with a containment unit. That was awesome. I think that was like their trick, you know, they were like, look, like maybe people will buy William Ather to like Walter Peck, but if we put a containment unit in there, everybody will buy it. And they, they were probably right. The Diamond Select one looks really good too, but it's probably not as good as the Maddie one. I think the Maddie likeness is just a lot better, but in general, I think it looks pretty good. I've never, I don't really have too many other Diamond Select figures, so I don't know if they have like you know, characters with suits. I don't know if they reused anything here from other lines. Uh, all I knew was it looked cool, but it was just like one of those things where I didn't need it, so I got rid of it. So surprisingly, uh, Janine was only released by Diamond. I think it was one of those things where Maddie just said that they didn't have the money to for tooling so that they could make a Janine figure. And that was a big letdown because I think that, you know, in general, Maddie did a pretty decent job with the um, the likenesses. And it would have been cool to have a six-inch scale Janine to go with the Maddie figures. I'm sure that Hasbro will probably try to do one sometime in the future. I would put money down on it, actually. <laughs> but um, the Diamond Select figure actually was pretty good. It did look like Annie Potts. Um, it just, I, I don't know. It just, when I got to the end of the line, I was just kind of like, eh, I don't I don't really need this. And, uh, you know, some figures re you regret selling, but... This is kind of one where I don't regret it. I think that if Hasbro does release a six-inch Janine figure, I'll probably just be happy with that. Up next, we got Janosch Poha. And uh, like I said, I never had Janosch Poha, so I can't really say too much about, you know, the uh, consistency of his figure. Like, I don't know if from the prototype to the actual final figure, if anything changed or, you know, if it looked fine. I forgot to mention when I was talking about Lewis, the paint on Lewis, like around his hair was just awful. It was, it was horrible. So hopefully Janos didn't have the same problems. And Janos was played by Peter McNichol. And uh, from what I can tell, this toy, it looked pretty similar to him. I think they did a pretty good job. Then you have baby Oscar. And like I said, since I didn't get Janos, I don't really have much to say about him. But I mean, he's a baby. What can you say? It doesn't look like he really had much articulation. More just like a... 
a sculpted baby. The rookie was actually pretty cool. I mean, he had the same body as um, the four Ghostbusters. Uh, he just had a different head. And that head looked okay, but it didn't really necessarily fit in with the other Ghostbusters because it didn't really look like a real person. It's it's more cartoony, I guess, than a, a character's likeness. And um, one of the coolest things about uh, the rookie figure was that he came with a pro or I'm sorry, he came with a, a ghost trap that had the cool orange uh, energy beam, and uh, he also had a trap and a PKE meter uh, sculpted onto his belt. So that was a pretty awesome addition to, you know, your Ghostbuster figure. If you love the game, you should pick him up. I don't know why I sold this. This is like one of the biggest probably regrets. Um, I, I, I shouldn't have sold this uh, rookie figure. He's actually pretty cool. I liked him a lot. Now here we have what I consider the main event of the Ghostbusters side characters because like who didn't want Lewis in a Ghostbusters uniform? Um, I remember when Maddie began, everybody was asking, when are you going to give us Lewis in a Ghostbusters suit? And we just never got it. So that was a very big disappointment in that line because I think that they could have did, did a good job. And uh, I think Diamond did a really good job here. I think he looks great. When they first revealed Lewis, they actually gave him the same body type as the other Ghostbusters. And um, even I think in the, the prototype shots, he's in the, the, the regular Ghostbusters body. And, you know, that would have been a huge mistake. They really needed to make him a lot smaller. And they did a very nice job of, it looks like a brand new sculpt. I don't know if they just like, you know, if if it's like a digital sculpt that they just kind of shrunk down. It, there's Things are different in it, but, you know, it looks great. It looks perfect. You know, I got no complaints whatsoever. Um, he even has the Spangler name tag on his chest. You know, he's got all the same articulation that the other Ghostbusters have. Like, all the points are exactly the same. I don't really move him around too much because I don't feel like breaking him accidentally because I just think that a lot of these diamond figures feel a little fragile or something. Um, he even has like probably the best proton pack out of all of them because he actually has the sticker down here on the end filter. Um, I think out of all of them, he has the most stickers, so that's great. He still has all the bits on his belt where you can uh, add the ghost trap and you can add the wand to the front. He came with the walkie-talkie. He was loaded with stuff, and I thought it looks great. Even his face sculpt, I think, is way better than the um, the regular Lewis that they put out. The first one from wave, what, one? All the way back when the, la the line began. It looks so much more like Rick Moranis. It looks it looks really great. They did an amazing job. This is, this is a definitely a highlight of the Diamond Select series. So, the winner for side characters has to go to Diamond. Like, it, it just has to. Like, they just have more characters. And, um, you know, of course, their Dana and their Lewis, their regular Lewis, are awful. You know, they're they're pretty ugly figures. Um, Maddie beat them there, but, like, just the number of characters is just so much better. Like, you got pretty much everybody that you would want from Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 you had in the Diamond Select line. And, of course, I've sold all of them, except for uh Lewis and Ghostbuster gear, but, you know, if I put my money down and said, well, who had the most characters and still did a pretty decent job of it, it would go to Diamond. You know, maybe Hasbro can steal the, the torch someday, but at the moment, it's Diamond. And, you know, just having Lewis and Ghostbusters gear was just, was just awesome. Like, that's, you know, one of my favorite things about the whole Diamond Select line was getting that toy. And, uh, so... Pretty exciting, wasn't it? We're done with side characters now. And now, finally, like I'm more excited about talking about this than I am about side characters. Finally, we get to start talking about ghosts. So let's begin by talking about category 14, the small ghosts. I'm going to be completely honest with you here. They needed way more ghosts in these lines. Like, they just didn't give you enough. You know, when you have your Ghostbusters and you're trying to set them up on your shelf, it just seems so boring for them not to have any ghosts to battle or try to catch or anything like that. And sure, with the Maddie line, you got Slimer right off the bat. But it took them a year and like two months or a month before uh, they released the Subway Ghost. And that was like the first malevolent ghost you got in that ghost line. So it took a while. And even Diamond, the first ghost you got was Slimer. And that was you know, pretty far into the line. And then it wasn't until the end, the, the waves five, I think, uh, that you finally got 
the library ghost, the taxi ghost, and the terror dog. Like, it took way too long to get to some ghosts that you can set up your guys catching. And, uh, so, you know, these are the small, what I consider the small ghosts. They're, um, you know, they're just kind of here and there. There isn't, like, a big catching thing. You could maybe say the library ghost might be a bigger ghost, but she's not, to me, the library ghost isn't a franchise ghost. They don't, like, put pictures of her on, like, t-shirts and cards and all that other kind of stuff, so... Um, these are the small ghosts and Maddie had five small ghosts and Diamond had three small ghosts. Hasbro has no small ghosts. So Hasbro already is out of this battle. And you know, this battle just kind of comes down to quantity versus quality. So first up, we're going to talk about the ghost, the Ghostbusters first encountered, the library ghost. And lucky for us, both Maddie and Diamond put out a library ghost. And I think both companies did a very good job with her. So here's the Maddie Library Ghost, and in my opinion, this one kind of looks more like the movie Library Ghost than the Diamond one. The Diamond one is a little bit more detailed and stuff like that, but there are certain things about the proportions of this one's face and the hair that, you know, in my opinion, it looks more like the movie. Um, like I said, you don't have all that extra detail, you really don't have all that extra paint and stuff like that on her that the Diamond, was do the Diamond one does. But I still like it. I think it's pretty cool. I like how it's set up. Basically, she's made out of translucent uh, plastic, and they just kind of painted some spots on top of her, like this, you know, very heavy pink right here. And you have pink where the, the rags are by the arms, but the arms are um, see-through. And, you know, I really like this. I like this a lot. It was cool. It came with the uh, lab coat Egon. And, um, you know, in my opinion, it was the, the best reason to get lab coat Egon. And she only has a couple points of articulation. You can rotate her arms around. There's nothing below that. And uh, the head moves from side to side. I do like these stands that Maddie included with their ghosts. I feel like um, even though you can't, like, I don't know, adjust them, they are still very sturdy and they work well with these ghosts. Like, you put the ghosts on there and they're, you know, they're not going to move. They're just going to be stuck there. I think that's great. You might think that she appears maybe too small with next to the Ghostbusters, but I think that her scale is still pretty good next to theirs, you know. Um, I guess she would kind of be the same scale as a, a human. But I think it's fine. So if you look at the toy like this and you kind of look at the size of the mouth and the way her brows fit above her eyes, um, I think that this face and sort of set up kind of match the movie more if you take a look at her here in the film to me that kind of matches a little better than this diamond version i think this diamond version is really cool i like the way the face looks and everything like that you know it looks like she looks really nasty and all but uh i don't know this is more like stylized or something so that it doesn't necessarily look as much like the movie library ghost but i still really like it because she's bigger and she was actually her own release, she was like the actual figure that came in the package, plus the diorama. She wasn't a pack-in ghost like the, the Maddie one. You know, they they gave her a lot more paint apps. They, uh, you know, they put a lot more work into this one. So I think it is really cool. I like it. Um, she has more articulation. That's one thing that's a little bothersome. The, um, I don't like these, um, these stands for this ghost. It's kind of tricky to use it. See, I didn't even mean for her to fall off then, but... <sighs> it's like you gotta plug it in here, and then you plug it in here. But she's really heavy, so she just kind of pulls this thing down all the time. And you're kind of stuck, like, right here. But she has a shoulder articulation. You have elbow articulation. You have wrist articulation. They all swivel, and they all have hinges. And then the, uh, the head is on a ball joint. And, uh, like I said, the tattered clothes and the paint all look good. It just doesn't necessarily look as much like the Library Ghost for me. If you don't have this book, I highly recommend it. This Ghostbusters Ultimate Visual History by Daniel Wallace. Inside here, there's a shot of the Library Ghost. And, um, like, I, I just think that the way this looks... Matches the, the Maddie figure a little more than the Diamond figure. Just proportionately and um, just design in the, in the face. 
You really can't go wrong with either, though. I think both of them are fantastic. I really like this Ghost. I think both companies did a great job. What I think is cool about these toys, too, is I think you can mix and match these two Ghosts with any of the lines if you want. You know, maybe the Maddie Library Ghosts might not mix in so well with the Diamonds one, but uh, the Maddie one still mixes with the Hasbro figures, and I think the Diamond one can mix with all three. Um, so that's great. Up next, both companies had a Taxi Cab Ghost. I like the Maddie Taxi Cab Driver Ghost a lot. I think he's pretty cool. You know, in the movie, you only see him from, like, the chest up. So you don't really... They didn't do the whole body. I think that's fine. You know, nobody knows what he looks like underneath the torso. So, um... The way that this guy is built is that his body and his arms are made out of uh, translucent plastic. And they're just kind of painted a little bit of black. You know, probably have, like, a black wash or something on there. So you just have little bits and pieces that are see-through. And then other parts where that are dark and you can't see through them. I think it actually has a really cool effect. I like it. Um, the effect does not piss me off. I think it, it, it makes me very happy. And uh, they just painted the, uh, you know, his, his, the, the rib cage um, just brown, like up here in the face. And that looks good too. Even the t-shirt is painted completely uh, white. So there's nothing translucent about those areas. Um, the hat is fine. I don't necessarily think he looks just like the taxi cab driver in the in the movie but i think his face does look pretty good um i do like the details however because it's not painted I, I, it's probably not as good as the diamond one i gotta mention too that this guy came with uh lab coat peter so he like all the lab coat figures came with pack and ghost which was great you know that gave you Pretty much an excuse to buy the lab coat figures if you didn't really care for the their uh, their designs. See, if you look at him in the film, he's just got like lots of little details and different colored parts. You know, it really makes it look like his face is melting off. Um, and then if you look at the diamond version, I think it like, you know, captures that a lot. It's really good. You know, the proportion of the face might be um, not as similar it might be a little he might have too square of a jaw but in in general i think he looks awesome i think this guy's really cool you know they obviously had to figure out how to do his legs and his shoe here i think that's a nice little detail how his shoe is ripped open you can see his toes sticking out and this one this side you don't have any shoes at all you just have the the foot however he is also very difficult to stand he always tips over because of the way that the feet are built i don't know i i I really have a problem with uh, Diamond Select's feet. I feel like they just, they don't make them big enough or they don't really sculpt them in a in a way that he can, there, that's fine, that he can really balance himself well. It's like those old Ninja Turtle toys. Drives me crazy. Um, I think some of the proportions of this guy is a little weird too. Like, he has a very long torso, I think. Um, yeah, I think the, the upper torso needs to be a little longer. Or maybe the... No. Scratch that. The upper torso is fine. The legs need to be longer. Um, it just... You know, something's a little off about it. But the details are nice. You have all these little rips and stuff. In the... Um, in the... Uh, you know. The, the stuff his jacket's made out of. You have all these little rips. Even here you have little bits of fuzz sticking out. That's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, it just looks good. It looks like he's... He's rotting away. He also comes with a steering wheel, which is pretty cool. So, you know, it looks like he's just crashed the taxi and he's walking around with this thing. I think I forgot to mention this in my accessories video, so... Forget I just said that. Because of Diamond's 7-inch scale, I don't think that the Taxi Cab Driver Ghost can mix in with the 6-inch scale Ghostbuster figures. But I think that the Maddie uh, Taxi Cab Driver Ghost... Pro looks like he mixes in well with that uh the Hasbro Egon so you know that's pretty good you know it's just with this diamond toy you know he looks awesome but prepare be prepared to to get a stand because without this oh look at that oh my gosh it's a miracle oh you know what he's probably supporting himself on Winston there <laughs> yeah after the taxi cab driver ghost, Diamond doesn't have any more ghosts from Ghostbusters 1. None, well, well, no more small ghosts, at least. 
Um, but lucky for us, Maddie has one really awesome ghost from Ghostbusters 1, and that's this subway ghost. And I love this thing. You know, I never realized when I was a kid that he was like, kind of have like a, a fish head. Um, I always kind of, like when I would watch my VHS tape, I always kind of read it or saw it as being sort of like a witch. Like to wait, the way it appeared to me was it kind of had like a long nose and long hair. Like I had no idea that it was like a fish thing. So this was a this was like a huge surprise for me when I got it. But you know, I love this thing. I think this is a great ghost. That's the one thing that like. You know, it's a, such a disappointment that people don't keep on making more and more, more ghosts from Ghostbusters because I think that they had so much to offer. So many cool, different, little, interesting designs that you, you know, you just don't get from other franchises. Um, this ghost has, let's see, he's got two points of articulation in each hand. You have a, a hinge and the, the swivel is sort of his shoulder there. And you can also uh, hinge the elbow. And, you know, you could just... Oh, you can do a lot with them, and I love them. I love this trans blue color, translucent blue color. I really like him a lot. He's a favorite of mine. He's he's a huge highlight for the uh, the Maddie Collector line. And this guy came with lab coat Ray. And um, you know, could you imagine if Diamond was able to do like these ghosts? I think they would have did a fantastic job with this guy. You know, he probably wouldn't have been translucent, which is kind of a bummer. But I still think it would have been awesome having another uh version of this guy like like i need more and more go ghosts again in this ghostbusters the ultimate visual history book um you have a really awesome picture of uh the subway ghost there but he doesn't look like he's got everything on him which is kind of a bummer but you know it's it's really hard to make it out make it out how he looks in the film like i try to get still shots of him but I just couldn't, you know, get anything that really showed any details of how he looked. It was all way too bright. I don't know if that's just from the DVDs or what. The final ghost from, I guess, Ghostbusters 1. It's not even technically a ghost. It's just a 3D logo that Maddie included with their standard Ray figure. And I remember that, like, this was just kind of like a disappointment for me. Like, I like the logo. I think it's cool. But I... You know, when you got Egon and you got Slimer right off the bat, that was awesome. So you're like, oh, cool. Like, is everybody going to have a, a companion ghost or a packing ghost? And then you got Ray and you got this this logo. To me, that was like a letdown. It was like, I want some ghosts that they can actually bust. And and then later in 2016, when they released the, uh, the Ghostbusters with removable packs in store, they included pieces to build like a giant one of these logos, a nice build-a-figure uh logo but uh in my opinion like i said it was i wasn't too excited about it and eventually i sold mine i guess one of the positive things though is that uh he glows in the dark that's pretty neat i like stuff that glows in the dark can you see that no it's too difficult for ghostbusters 2 each line only had one small ghost maddie collector had the cinema ghost and I love this guy. Like, this is one of my favorite ghosts. I just think he looks awesome. I love the multiple eyes on him. You have so much cool little detail in here and his teeth. Um, the only thing that you could say is that in the film, he's supposed to have wings. You know, this doesn't have wings. But in general, like, I don't even really care. I just think it's really cool. Like, I wish, I just wish we could have got more and more ghosts. Like, for me as a kid, like, I loved all those little ghosts. Like, the little, the, the little friend ghost, or like, packing ghosts. And just the big ghosts, like Bug Eye Ghost and H2 Ghost and all that kind of stuff. So it was such a bummer that all these lines seem to think that, like, ghosts, are, like, take a back seat to the Ghostbusters. Like, for me, they're equal. And this is great. The tail back here, that can rotate around. You can rotate the tail on the, the, the Subway Ghost, too. I forgot to mention that. The, uh, because he has, like, you know, two sets of hands... You have articulation in the shoulder as a hinge, and you can rotate that. And then the second hand just kind of has rotation where the elbow should be. And, you know, like I said, he's great. And, uh, you know, I think all these Maddie stands are great, too. Like, it does a really good job of supporting him. And, you know, I think what's great about this ghost and the subway ghost is that you can stick this guy with any Ghostbusters line you want, and he will fit in perfectly because he's not, like, a, a human character He's just like some kind of specter or 
you know, some kind of creature. And that's that's one of the best things about the Ghostbuster ghosts, too, is that they had these weird designs. Like, I don't know. I always loved that. That was always my favorite. Even in the cartoon, all those little weird little ghosts that, you know, it, it was just like an excuse for the designers to be creative and create new and different things. Just weird, weird things. And, you know, as a kid, you just loved seeing all that. And um, so here's the toy. And you can see how he looks in the film. And I think in the film, he looks pretty similar to this. You know, I would I don't think there's any pictures of him in the ultimate visual history. Like, I wish that they had way more shots and promo shots of all this awesome stuff. Like, it's it's kind of a bummer that a lot of these ghosts from Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters 2 are highly overlooked. So here's the final ghost. Well, the final small ghost, at least. And this one's from Diamond. And, you know, this is just a severed head from when the Ghostbusters uh, go underground and try to find the river of slime. And here you can see the head. If it'll stop shaking around a little bit. And I'm pretty sure that this head right here is the one that they're, you know, basing this off of. And I love that scene. That scene used to scare me when I was a kid. I thought it was great. I kind of wish they would have uh, included more of these. Uh, with, I, I can't remember who this came with. This came with, uh, Slime Blower Ray? Or Slime Blower Winston? Maybe it was Winston. I can't remember. Or, who was it? Well, it came with one of the Ghostbuster 2 ghosts in Diamond Selects line. And, you know, I wish they could have given you multiples of these just so you can set them up. You know, different heads from the movie. Because there's a lot of cool designs there. Like, if you look around in the background, you see just weird, weird heads. And it would have been cool to have little toys of theirs. And, you know, this, the the detail on this is fine. The, uh, the paint is really good. You know, you have the cool little pole. And then at the bottom, you got a little piece of uh, asphalt or something that it's stuck into. And, you know, I think it's cool. I like it, but I wish that Diamond would have done, you know, the Cinema Ghost or something like that. They could have done so many more elaborate ghosts. And I think that they would have done an amazing job. But unfortunately, we just didn't get them. So for me, the clear winner of Small Ghosts are the Maddie Collector Ghosts. Like, sure, Diamond has more uh, detail on their library ghost and their taxi cab ghost, but just having the Subway Ghost and the Cinema Ghost, you know, just really push these over the edge for me. Um, I like their library ghost. I like the taxi cab ghost. Sure, they're not as detailed and they don't have all the paint and stuff like that, but they they look fine. And I think what's great about the all these ghosts is they very easily can cross over uh, two other Ghostbuster toy lines. You can mix them in with your Hasbro Ghostbusters. I think they even mix in with the Diamond Select Ghostbusters. I think the, the Diamond Select Ghost are too detailed to really cross over between lines. And yeah, I'd even put these guys next to my real Ghostbusters. Like, I just love these things. I love the translucent uh, plastic. I think they're fantastic. I don't think uh, Diamond beat them, and I think that, you know... It's very uh, unlikely that Hasbro will beat these two. But, you know, I hope Hasbro proves me wrong. Let's face it, all those ghosts are pushovers compared to the ghosts in category 15. Yes, we're going to talk about the big ghosts or the franchise ghosts or the popular ghosts. These are the ghosts that I consider to be like, you know, I mean, they're the most popular ghosts. They're the ghosts you'd see on like t-shirts or stickers or stuff like that. Artwork for the movie. You know, they crossed, a lot of them crossed over into the cartoon and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, let's talk about these. The big ghosts. And first up, we're going to talk about the green ghost. Yeah, Onion Head, Slimer. So because we've been talking about all the movie lines, we have to talk about NECA. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the, the NECA Slimer. I wish I did, but I don't have them. And, you know, I just, I think they did a great job. And he came with tons of food, and he had a cool uh, translucent green stand. You know, he was fantastic. Like, I, I like the Slimer a lot. I just, you know, I slept on it. I didn't have any money in college, so I didn't even pick him up. And then after that, you know, the prices of the NECA figures just kept on soaring. And I was like, I don't know, 50 bucks seems a, a little much. And now, you know, what is this, pushing like... A hundred, a hundred dollars or more. So, I should have picked this up years ago. But you know, he looks awesome. He looks great. And if you look at this clip, he looks very uh, similar to how he appears in the movie. You know, he's pretty cool looking. So here's Maddie Slimer, and uh, I think that uh, possibly this, I think this might be the best Slimer that we've gotten so far. I think that the face on this looks almost exactly like it does whenever he's eating the food in the hotel. 
um, just proportionately the way his the top of his head is flat and you know like everything about his features looks, just looks a lot like that movie part um, and I think this one looks great you know it's kind of a, a toss-up too if they should have gone with the route like they kind of showed him in the the magazine when they first revealed Slimer but uh, I don't know I really like this translucent Slimer too I think he looks fantastic and uh, you know there's some spots in here that have kind of gotten a little cloudy over time but it's just really cool I think he's the best one um, the arm size the the mouth I think he's great this Slimer originally came with the uh, San Diego Comic-Con Egon the slimed Egon the very first one we got Egon and we got Slimer in the same package could you go wrong with that mix probably not um, they also released the Slimer later on in the uh, the Toys R Us <laughs> the Toys R Us four pack, the uh, Weird Back four pack from Ghostbusters two, and so he's in that. And they also when you know when they canceled the Ecto one orders, and uh, they decided to give everybody a gift, they gave him this same exact Slimer, only glow in the dark. So that was pretty cool. A second Slimer was also released with a. Uh, with his tongue sticking out, but like, I don't know. I never really liked that one. I didn't think it looked as cool as this one with the open mouth. So uh, he was one of those guys that just kind of got the ax when I was just trying to thin some, make some space and uh, make back some of my money so I could buy more toys. Here's the uh, the diamond Slimer. And uh, like, I didn't like this at all. Uh, I don't think he looks that movie accurate. I think sometimes he looks more like the Slimer from Ghostbusters 2. Like if you look at Slimer here in this shot. I feel like, you know, this one looks a little more like that, but still not as good as that. And um, one of the things I really didn't like about the Slimer was the, the size of his arms. His arms were gigantic. Like they were almost the same size as the Ghostbusters. So, you know, eventually I got rid of this because I was like, I don't even need that. I'll just keep with the Maddie one and put the Maddie one with whatever Ghostbusters I want to set up. So I got rid of that. And, uh, you know, I don't regret that because I think it, it wasn't that great. Sure, you had the, the extra heads. You had the uh, the head with the hot dogs in the mouth, which is cool. But, you know, the face doesn't look like Slimer in the movie. So for me, it was just like, I don't know. I, di I didn't like this one. I didn't think it was that great. If you're going to find a, a Slimer, you should probably hunt down the, the Maddie Slimer. I think, it, I think it was pretty good. I think the Maddie Slimer is so great that you can, you know, mix them and match with whatever line you want. He looks good next to the Hasbro Ghostbusters. He looks good next to the Diamond and the Maddie ones. You know, I think he's great. And unfortunately, so far, we haven't seen a Slimer in the Hasbro line. But, I mean, come on. They have to give you a Slimer. Companies will milk Slimer as much as they can. They know he's like a money-making ghost so I'm sure that he's he's coming. I mean, he's already come with the the Transformers, Ectotron. I'm sure we're gonna probably get tons and tons and tons of Slimers once Afterlife starts to get in motion here. So who's the most popular ghost in Ghostbusters history after Slimer? Why, Mr. Stay Puft, of course. And Stay Puft, he I mean he shows up in the Neca line. He showed up in Maddie, Diamond Select, and uh, I haven't seen they haven't revealed a uh, a Plasma series Stay Puft yet. But I've seen a more child-friendly Stay Puft toy where you can push the head down and it changes the expressions on his face. They're already a target, so I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we get some kind of plasma Stay Puft. And, uh, you know, before I get into, you know, the main contenders, uh, Maddie, Dime, and Diamond, Hasbro isn't included because they got nothing, uh, let's talk about the NECA Stay Puft. Now, I did get this Stay Puft when I was in college. This was the only one that I bought when they came out because I was like, this thing is awesome. And, you know, it was more expensive than the other guys, but, you know, I swung it and I got it. And he's awesome. He's great. I love the expression on his face. I think he's way more evil than uh, Stay Puft usually appears. He looks even more evil than Angry Stay Puft uh, in the movie. And, uh, you know, he's just really cool. He's he's huge. He's made out of hard plastic. The, uh, the paint on him is really good. He only has three points of articulation. And I have to stretch pretty far to reach this because I'm behind the camera. And my camera is so far away from him because he's so big. And, you know, this isn't even the biggest Stay Puft. <laughs> but, um, you know, he's awesome. His arms rotate around. His head rotates around. He's got a cloth uh, ribbon on top of his head. The only, uh, the only negative I think about this guy is that the paint they use for the marshmallows is very, it's a very textured paint. 
and it's like really really hard to clean this guy off like you try to dust him with like a rag and your rag just gets pulled apart because it's so textured it just you know those little fibers in your cloth get caught on him but other than that you know this guy's fantastic and uh, you can mix him pretty much with any ghostbusters line which is great you know, here's Maddie. Pretty small still. There's Diamond Select, and you know, Diamond, of course, is a little too big. And gosh, come on, would you stand up? Like, I have to tilt him up against Stay Puff just to get him to stand there. And then Hasbro. So I think he mixes well with every line. I think he's fantastic. I love this Stay Puff. So here's a close up of uh, this Stay Puff's face, and man, you know. Of course, it's it's off model from the movie. You know, he doesn't necessarily look like Stay Puff to the movie, but uh, you know, it looks enough like him, and it just looks so evil and angry. Like this Stay Puff really looks like the destruct destructor. Uh, I think he's pretty cool looking, and you can see like the textured uh, paint on him. And uh, you know, like like I said before, like it's hard to clean him, so there are like some dirty spots on him. It just won't. You know, I can't get them. Can't buffer him out. So back on track with the uh, regular comparison battle here. Let's begin. Maddie versus Diamond. Uh, Maddie released this awesome 22 inch Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Uh, I think he's fantastic, but of course he's gigantic. He's 16 inches tall. Uh, you know, I can't even fit him on the camera. Like I have to back up and all this other stuff. He's huge. Let's see here. Here's my hand and here he is. He's gigantic, and he's made out of foam, so he's a little squishy. And um, because he's squishy and he's made out of foam, uh, unfortunately, you know, he does have some problems, some negative things going on here, such as the foam starts to yellow after a while. That was like a very quickly after people got this Stay Puffed, they started writing Maddie and telling them about how he was yellowing, which is, you know, it sucks. I actually bought two of these guys and one of them got really yellow and I actually was able to return that to Maddie and get a refund and then I just kept this one which wasn't as yellow and I figured you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep this guy and just see how it goes and if he gets yellow he gets yellow I don't care I think it's an awesome stay puffed and like I thought he was really awesome I was I was really happy to get it one of the problems about him being squishy is that uh if you have anything leaning up against him it'll leave an imprint on him and uh, for whatever reason, like it never comes out. Like these, these imprints have been here forever and they have never uh, flattened or come out. And you could see like on the side here too, where the seam is, how it's getting very yellow. Um, but you know, this guy is just, he's gigantic. He's huge. It's getting yellow and, and brown up top. Like that's just, you know, it's just naturally happening like that just by sitting on my shelf. I guess it's, what is that? Maybe that's like a paint or a, some kind of a glue or something like that that's really turning yellow brown. I don't know, it's kind of a bummer. When this guy came out, he was 60 bucks. Plus he came in this huge box and you could open up the box and inside of that box was a, uh, <laughs> a diorama box. It was, it was really cool, it, it folded out and it made this huge cool uh, street diorama. I think it was very cool, but uh, I got rid of mine at some point. I'm not really sure why. Maybe to free up some space in my attic. It was just sitting up there for years. And, uh, you know, what's also really great about this Stay Puft is, like, look how big he is. He's huge. And he fits in scale, you know. Of course he's not, like, as big as he would be. I mean, he's, like, almost the size of a building. But, you know, because he's so large, he fits in perfectly with every Ghostbuster line. Not to mention, since he doesn't really have m many details, like if you look at Stay Puft in the movie, he's essentially like a, a children's logo or mascot or whatever. So he's not like detailed like the library ghost or the taxi cab driver and all that kind of stuff. He never changes from the movie to real Ghostbusters to any comics or anything like that. He's always the same design and, you know, it's very simple. So he can mix in with any of your Ghostbuster toys, even the old real Ghostbuster toys. You know, he just fits in perfectly because he's just Stay Puft. That's it. He's Stay Puft. 
I guess if anything you could say, like his face isn't like the most accurate to the movie. It's a little stylized or something. Maybe that's from the foam, but you know, it could be a little better proportionately to the way Stay Puft looks in the movie, but you know, it's still fine. Not to mention, you can buy this still. If you go to like those spirited Halloween stores, you can still buy this Stay Puft in the same exact um, sculpt. It's just, he's made out of hard plastic and always the paint looks awful on him. And I think he costs like 60 or 80 bucks or something crazy like that. And uh, you know, he's completely hollow. I don't know. It seems like uh, quite a rip off in my opinion. So Diamond does have three Stay Puffs in their normal line, uh, not including this guy. This guy, I just kind of put him here just to show him. This, obviously Diamond has other Stay Puffs, like this is one of their bank Stay Puffs, but he doesn't count because he's not a part of their main line. This is my son Stay Puffed. He like, <sighs> yeah, he was pretty rough on this guy. So he is not a part of it, but he does look cool. I'm just going to talk about the main um, Ghostbusters line Stay Puffs. And you know, even this one gets a little, you know, this is a little tricky because technically this was released when the Ghostbusters line turned to real Ghostbusters. But since Stay Puft's design is always the same, no matter what, you know, Ghostbusters continuity or whatever, I like he can mix in with the movie Ghostbusters just fine. All right. So like I said before, Diamond Select released three Stay Puffs. They all have the same body. They just have different heads, right? The third one, I didn't pick it up because it has this weird looking yelling face like it looks, it's, I guess it's supposed to be when the Ghostbusters are, are you know, they're crossing their streams and destroying uh, the uh, the gateway to Gozer's dimension or whatever. And, uh, you know, I just thought that looked so goofy. Like I, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of awful looking. So I passed it up and that was kind of like a later release. I think like Right after the line ended, they kind of had that as an exclusive. You could get that. I can't remember where it was exactly, but, you know, like I said, I passed on it. So back to these other uh, Stay Puffs. I think these look good. You know, the, the paint on these lo looks really nice. You have a very solid white on the bodies. Plus, you have a, a very, like, uh, light blue highlights all over the body. I love that kind of shading. Um, like, I like that. That's I do that a lot, too. Whenever I'm coloring stuff that's white, you use, like, a, a very bright blue to uh, to to add shadows. So I really like that on these guys. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes you accidentally nick these guys and you get these little marks, which is such a bummer because he's supposed to be so, so bright white that it's such a bummer getting, like, little tiny nicks here and there. And, um, you know, the faces look good. This is obviously when Stay Puft first appears, and here he is when he gets really angry. And, um, you know, I think these were pretty great. One thing I don't like about these guys, like, some of their articulation is fine. Like, they have a articulation here, here. No, the wrists are not so... So, like, the, all those joints are kind of hidden, and they're hidden well. You can turn things. Um, even the legs are articulated pretty well. Um, but I don't like how the, how much the head is disconnected from the body. Because if you're looking up, you can just very clearly see the, the rod in there that connects the body to the, the head. So mostly I just kind of try to, you know, put his face down like that so you don't see that in front. And, uh, you know, here he is, the toy when he's happy, and when he's happy in the movie. And here's the, the toy when he's angry. And you can see how he looks in the movie. I think this is a, a very good likeness for when uh, Stay Puft is angry. Mother pus bucket. So if you wanted to pick up these Stay Puffs in the line, uh, this Stay Puft came out in wave 10. That was the last wave of the whole line um, with the, the real Ghostbuster line. And then uh, this Stay Puft came in a, uh, I don't know if it was released at a convention first, but it was a, I got mine at GameStop. It was a box set. It had the spectral Ghostbusters. It had the uh, the the translucent blue terror dog and this cool angry Stay Puft. Personally, I like the angry Stay Puft better than this happy Stay Puft because he was a part of the standard Ghostbusters release for Diamond Select. You know, he's not much bigger than the regular Ghostbusters in that line, which is kind of a bummer. But you know, like, what were they gonna do? Um, that's why I pretty much prefer the uh, the Maddie. Stay puffed, even with all the yellowing. I like that he's a lot bigger than them and he just, you know, he looks cool. But, you know, I would say that 
pos- yeah, I would. I mean, even the face, I guess, on this diamond one looks a little better than that one. But I still prefer the, you know, just that he's gigantic and he can mix with any of the other Ghostbuster lines. Um, this, I mean, this Stay Puffed isn't even that much bigger than the uh, the old real Ghostbuster Stay Puffed. All right, so up next, we're going to talk about the Terror Dogs. And of course, I got to begin the conversation by talking about the NECA Terror Dogs. And unfortunately, I don't have these either, which is such a bummer because these guys are even more expensive than Slimer. <laughs> you know, to get like a set of these guys now, it costs like 300 bucks, which is crazy and ridiculous. But, you know, in my opinion, these might be the best terror dogs that ever came out. And, you know, one of them was called Zul, one was called Vince Clortho, and they actually had the different uh, length horns. So that's pretty great. You know, this is like one of those things where, like, of course, at this point in time, NECA was still in their statue phase where all their toys were pretty much articulated statues, like very, very small amounts of articulation and just tons and tons of detail like a statue. So, you, you know, you might lose some points for that. But in general, like they just look so great. And like even the body proportions, the way it's shaped and the legs come off, I think that they look the best out of all of them. And they're obviously like kind of hunched down like the... The terror dogs are usually hunched in the movie. That's how you want your terror dogs to look. So, you know, in my opinion, they are probably the best terror dogs that came out. But, um, Maddie, or not Maddie, Diamond did a pretty decent job too. So, after we sit here and we look at these cool terror dogs, and look at that, you could even put batteries in them and their eyes would light up. So, that was cool. So, if you will, if you don't have these two, let's all. Let's all share a cry together and think about how awesome it could have been. Oh my gosh. All right, fine. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the uh, the Diamond Select Terror Dogs. So here are the Diamond Terror Dogs. And unfortunately, this this part of the battle, uh, Maddie is not a part of because for whatever reason, Maddie never made the Terror Dogs. I don't know if it was a tooling thing or what, but they just never, never made any Terror Dogs there. I don't remember them even saying that it was ever like an option that they were going to make the terror dogs. So if you remember, if they ever talked about that, let me know. Did they say that they were going to make the terror dogs? Did they try? Did they just not have the money? I don't remember them ever mentioning it. I remember them clearly talking about like the human characters, but never really the terror dogs. And, you know, it's a shame because I think that they could have did a really good job because I think that in general, Maddie did a pretty good job with the Ghostbusters. So if you look at the diamond figures, um, First of all, I got to say that their faces look great. And, um, you know, unlike NECA, where NECA released uh, Zul, the Zul and uh, Vince Clortho in separate packages with, you know, different sized horns, they released one terror dog, but gave that terror dog two sets of horns, the long ones and the short ones. So you could buy two and make one Zul and one Vince Clortho. So that was fantastic. I really like the look at the face on this one. Like, look at that. There's tons of great detail on this guy. Like, detail-wise, you look at this, and it just looks fantastic. Like, the paint is actually good. This is one of the... This is, like, one of the best uh, Diamond Select paint jobs I've seen. Because the, the teeth are all clean. The, uh, the pink in the mouth is all clean. The eyes are so red and bright, and they're very clean around there. Like, he just looks fantastic. There's even, I think, like, a wash on this gray paint, and there's so much... So many de so much details in here that the, the black wash really brings it out and really emphasizes all the wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. So in the face, I think this guy looks great. He's he's probably my favorite out of the uh, the terror dogs I own. Now let's talk about the body though. Um, like I said, the face on these guys looks awesome. They look great, but the bodies on these guys are just really weird. The proportions are just. I just think they're way off, and um, I don't know. He's got such tiny, scrawny legs in the back. These legs up in the front are huge, and, uh, you know, here's a, a screenshot of what this guy is supposed to look like from the side, and uh, if you look at this diamond toy, like, I don't think it matches that at all. There's just something very off about it. It's very strange. He always, he's always kind of, like, like posed really high off the ground like this. You can't really get him low into like a, you know, like ready to pounce pose. He's just always like, I don't know. It There's just something off. Like this arm just appears like way too big. And I, I don't know.
So like I usually just kind of pose this guy where he's just kind of looking straight at me because I think from this angle, you know, I think he's fine. But as soon as you start turning him sideways, it just gets a little goofy looking. And here you go. Here's a uh, Zool with her short horns. And like I said, you just you can pull these out fairly simple and just plug them right in. Just plug them right in. There you go. And uh, it looks, it looks, I, I think these guys look pretty good, besides the body. So here's the, uh, the Hasbro Terror Dog, and, um, you know, I just, I think that this guy is, like, not as good as the Diamond one. You know, certain things about him are a little better. The body is probably a little better, but I think the face on the Diamond Terror Dog looks better than the face on this guy. And, uh, if you were collecting this whole set up until now, if you collected all six figures in wave one of the plasma series uh you know you got a bath piece and that bath piece those bath pieces put together this terror dog and then if you got lewis tully's terrible night the uh the the convention exclusive you got this second terror dog but um you know the, the most disappointing thing here is that they are both the same terror dog they are both uh vince clortho because he's got these long horns like i don't think that you know, maybe in the future they'll give you like a, a second head with short horns so you can have a Azul terror dog. But at the moment, this is just Vince Clortho. And, you know, I, I think some people like think that that's like a like a small nitpick or something like that with with the terror dogs. But I, I don't know. They kind of I think it, it matters. Like if you look at the face, it looks good. I think the details are very nice. Again, the, the paint is good inside the mouth. The pink is very clean. The yellow's clean and the eyes are good. There's just something about the Diamond Select Terror Dog faces that pop so much more than this. Um, I think that maybe th this face is like way too thin too. It's too narrow where the, the Diamond Select did a better job of being wider. And um, I don't know. I'm not too fond of the paint scheme on this guy either. It's like he's made, he's very dark gray, which is fine. He should be pretty dark gray. But then on the top of him, he just has like this very like very shiny metallic silver on his spine and on the top of his head. And I just like I don't know. It looks weird in person. It doesn't look like a creature. It looks like a statue or something. I don't know. There's just something off about it. But um in general, I think if you look at him from the side, he does look better. His proportions, I think, are a little closer to how they appear in the film. Um, but there, I don't know. You still can't, the articulation is still kind of not the best. You can't really, because he, he has no hinges in the back, uh, legs, you can't bend them outwards. So you can't really get him in a nice, uh, like pouncing kind of position. I don't know. I think it, I think they could have, you know, if you would have had that hinge there in the back legs, it, it would have did this guy a lot better. Um, and like even stuff like this, like this, uh, this like spike is, should be coming down here. Cause it's like essentially like a, an animal foot and that's kind of like the thumb or whatever. So it should be down here, the big toe of the, of his foot. I mean, he's okay. Like if you look at him next to the diamond, uh, terror dog the diamond one just has so much more of a presence like this face just looks so much better I think than this one does Especially like there's too much pink coming out of the sides. I don't know. It just it kind of makes him look like a more like a dog than some kind of uh, You know some kind of otherworldly demon dog like this guy um, I don't know. I, it's a mix because like I said the the proportions of this terror dog are so off from the from the side it kind of you know sets me off it's like if i could rip this head off and put it on this body i think then you would have like a way better terror dog so if we take the terror dog too and we look at him and see how he fits on this uh, rooftop scene you can fit them into these little uh those little nooks or you know those little pillars or altars that they stand on so that's good. If you want to, you can also do it with your uh, your Hasbro Terror Dogs. Yeah, whatever. I think the size of the Terror Dogs works well with Diamond, but 
uh, I don't know. To me, I kind of would pos would prefer them being a little bigger. So I also think they work really well with the Maddie figures. And you know, that just might be like me. Like, I, they might be proportionately in scale with the Diamond Select figures. But it just kind of looks cooler having them kind of huge and hulking over the Ghostbusters. So they even fit in well with the, the 6-inch Hasbro figures, you know. I think that I, I prefer these the faces at least, more than the, the Hasbro Terror Dogs. I mean, the body shape is probably a little better with the uh, the Hasbro Terror Dogs, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I wish I had the NECA ones. They fit in pretty well with the uh, the Maddie Ghostbusters too, so that's good. And uh, I guess they fit in well with the Diamond ones too, but maybe they're a little smaller than the, the Diamond Terror Dogs. So Diamond Select also released a, a Phantom Terror Dog that was see-through gray plastic. Obviously, this is not it. <laughs> I don't have that one. Uh, I skipped him. This is a, a Terror Dog that came in the uh, that uh, that exclusive real Ghostbusters pack because there's an episode where the Terror Dog shows up and he's blue. I can't remember what episode it is. Um, maybe Egon's Ghost? I think there's a Terror Dog in that that might be blue. Or maybe another one. Anyways, but you know, so obviously the Phantom Terror Dog would be gray, but see-through gray, and this guy's see-through blue. So he was cool, but you know, I just didn't pick up the other one. The final big ghost to talk about only came out in the Maddie line, which is such a disappointment. Like, could you imagine if the Scolari brothers came out in the Diamond line, if they were like as big as Stay Puft and they were fully articulated and they were painted and they had all their details and stuff? It would have been amazing, but unfortunately, we couldn't get them. From what I understand, and, you know, I could be wrong, but from what I remember hearing was that uh, maybe the likeness of the Scolari brothers is owned by ILM or something like that, and they just weren't able to able to produce them in the, the Diamond Select line. I don't know. They showed up in the Mini Mates. Why didn't they show up in the, in the, uh, the regular Diamond Select line? It's confusing. But, you know, I love these guys. You know, they're my... Probably one of my highest, my favorite parts about Ghostbusters 2. So I was really happy to see them. I hope we see more of these guys. I hope we see them in the Hasbro line. I need more Scolari Brothers stuff. I love these guys. So, uh, Nunzio, I think that's how you pronounce it. N U N Z I O. Nunzio? Nun Nunzio. Um, came with Courtroom Battle Peter and Tony. Nunzio and Tony. Uh, he came with Courtroom Battle Ray. And they're great. So, Nunzio or Nunzio Scolari, or pretty much how I just call him, I just call him the fat Scolari brother. Um, you know, I think he looks fantastic. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I really like this guy's design a lot. I always thought it was cool how he has like the little, uh, the thing on top of his head for when he was electrocuted on the chair. Um, I really like all the details on this guy, like all the fat folds and stuff like that and his face. Let's see if I can clear this up a little bit. I don't know. They look awesome. They look great. The, the, the expression on the face looks really great too. I like it a lot. Um, just all the folds and the, the plastic look great. I like that it's translucent blue with like dark blue highlights and some spots on here like the, the wristbands and the thing on top of his head are like a dark gray and then the, the mouth is painted and the eyes are painted. That all looks fantastic. His legs and his shoes look really good. Um, and you actually you can remove the shoes. And, um, you know, if you don't want them to stand, I should have been more prepared. Well, drop one shoe. He came with a, an extra set of feet. That, come on. You can make it look like he's flying around, but you know, you need to get a stand, and I have no stand, so I just make him stand. I do want to point out, too, that uh, this is like, this plastic down here is either kind of soft or something like that. At some point in time, when I've since I've had this figure, I've cracked this, and there's some little cracks over here. I don't remember if it fell, or if it was just from taking out the legs. I'm not really sure how that happened. You can kind of see, like like the proportions of their body here and then you know if you take a look at the toys like it's not a hundred percent but I still think it's pretty good 
And now here's Tony, and he's very different than uh, Nunzio because, like, so much more of his body is actually painted. He still has, like, he's still made out of translucent plastic, but um, just his paint is a lot thicker and a lot darker, so he doesn't necessarily match the other guy. Um, but he still looks really cool. I think his face looks really good. Um, I don't know why they gave him, like, the brown hair. Like, wouldn't you make the whole thing kind of blue like that? But eh, whatever. So, he, of course, you know, since he is a packing ghost, much like the fat skull, Harry brother, he has no leg articulation. He only has arm articulation, so you can rotate it at the shoulder. And, you know, you have a swivel and a hinge at the elbow. The head goes does turn around, so that's pretty good. I think the detail on him is pretty good. Like, I like it. It's just, you know, it's very disappointing that these guys weren't, um, that they didn't make them their own figure and that they didn't give them, like, more articulation and just really go all out with them. So here's, like, a, a close-up of their faces in the movie. And then uh, if we come to the, the, the toy, you could see that they are a lot different. You know, I think it's a, a decent representation of them but not necessarily on exactly you know there's some little things off here and there um but you know i still like them i think they're pretty cool because these guys are so small they don't really fit in with the uh the diamond figures they mostly just fit in with the six inch figures and see the diamond one he's he's way too big compared to them but um but, you know, they're, I think that, you know, they're just way too small for the, the six inch figures too. So that's a bummer. I think that, you know, these guys should have been at least the size of like the diamond stay puffed or something. You know, they should have been uh, bigger and towering over them. And, you know, like I don't understand because I'm not in the toy business, how tooling works and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you spent the money to make these smaller ghosts, you had to tool all that. Why couldn't you go like the extra mile and just pay a little more money to, you know, tool full, full, tool fully thought out ghosts with a little more articulation and just bigger in size? Like, like to me, stuff like that seems like it would be worth the risk of not getting all your money back. Like trying to put out something that like, you know, would awe and try to get people on board. Like if you had like huge Scolari brothers, people who like passed on Walter Peck and, um, you know, Ghostbuster variant after Ghostbuster variant, you know, they might have actually kind of jumped on board and been like, oh, I'm definitely going to buy that. You know, I, I don't know how well if these like guys uh, helped sell those courtroom figures they came with. That's a possibility. But I just think it would have been better if they would have had their own figure. So I think that there's a lot to consider here with uh, the big ghosts from both Diamond and Maddie. But in my opinion, I prefer the the Maddie big ghosts. Yeah, I know. I, you, you probably think I'm wrong, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, <laughs> and um, if you think I'm wrong, let me know, that's fine, but uh, I don't know, I like the giant Stay Puff that Maddie had, I like their Slimer a lot better, I think he looks more like Slimer, and I like the translucent uh, plastic, um, I didn't really like the Diamond Slimer at all, I thought it was a, a misstep for them, especially those giant weird arms, I thought that was bad, and you know, the Terror Dogs are really cool, but at this point, you could get the Terror Dogs from Hasbro. You could get the Terror Dogs from NECA back in the day. You know, so you, you have more options with the Terror Dogs, but you won't find the Scolari Brothers in a six-inch scale anywhere else. Obviously, they're not as big as they should be, but still, I like that. I prefer that. You know, the Terror Dogs, too, even though I think that they have awesome faces, they look just like the Terror Dogs in the movie. Um, the bodies are weird. Like, I don't know, the way that they stand on yourself is just strange. So, they, in my opinion, they lose a couple of points for that. So, like I said, I think the, the winner of the big ghosts, the most popular ghost, franchise ghosts, is Maddie. And that just leaves one more category. Holy crap! We finally made it! We're at category 16! I never thought we'd get here. Um, if you watched all 300 hours of this, uh, retrospective... I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. So, now let's get started. The major manifestations are the baddest of the bad. They're not just some simple ghosts who are out pestering potential clients, no. These guys are hell-bent on bringing about the end of the world. There has been at least one major manifestation in every line. So far, Diamond Select is the only series to include both Gozer and Vigo. 
Maddie never included Gozer because either they couldn't get the, the tooling, the money for the tooling, or the actress wouldn't sign off on the likeness, or they didn't have the money for the likeness, something like that. I, I don't re remember, but uh, as usual, it was, a, it was a money issue. So, first, of course, we're going to talk about Gozer. And before we talk about Diamond and Hasbro, uh, let's see what NECA had to offer. I think NECA's Gozer was actually really cool. Like, I like this one a lot. Um, it's a shame that we only got one series of, of NECA figures because I think that they did a really great job um, with all the toys they worked on. The only thing about this is that it's, you know, back when NECA was still making statue figures. So the articulation is very limited. You're, you're only pretty much going to be able to pose her in, you know, one position, and that's about it. I think when Gozer shows up in the film, she feels very imposing. Uh, she feels more like a threat than anything that appeared before in the movie, and probably even more threatening than Vigo and the Ghost in Ghostbusters 2. There's a, an otherworldly feel about her or him or it that just wasn't matched. Um, and I think that this NECA toy is the only one that kind of captures that. It's very stylistic, but the exaggeration helps give her a, uh, um, an evil presence. I think out of all the Gozers, I think the bubbles on her body look the best because they're actually very dynamic. Like, they're very sharp, so they kind of stand out and stick out better. Not to mention that the, like, the paint on them is kind of, like, glittery, so they shine. And, uh, I don't know, they look pretty good. Also, I think that, you know, the, the little texture around the bubbles, like these little ratty pieces, it's, it's kind of like on the suit she wears in the suit. I think that looks a lot nicer on this because it's just, I don't know, the, it's just more dynamic and, you know, it stands out better. I feel like a problem with some of the other Gozer figures is that they become very bland. And, you know, this is when NECA was doing their whole statue thing, so... You're not going to get much articulation or, like, movement out of her. Like, you can move the arms around, but... Come on, they, like, just kind of hit into her face. The head does spin around, so that's good. And, uh, you know, the way that her legs are sculpted... Like, they're too close together, so she's always going to fall over. So, um... You need her to have this stand, and if you don't use the stand, like I said, she'll just tip over. And you do have some cuts in the legs there, but, you know, what are you going to do with that? Not much at all. She probably doesn't have the the closest likeness, but I still think that it, it works out really well. It looks very nice still. I think a, a great addition to this figure is the extra head. You can just very easily pop that head off <laughs> and put the same, this head on her and, you know... I think that looks great. I mean, she looks super pissed. I think it's I, th I think it's perfect for this shot, especially in the movie. And none of the other toys have that. They all just have very blank, very, you know, boring kind of expressions on their face. Another really cool addition to this figure is that, you know, her hands, you can take them off too. Just very easily pull them off. Pull them off. And, um, where's the second one? There it is. There you go. So you could be like, are you a god? Then die. <laughs> um, I like this a lot. I think it's pretty cool. I think it matches the movie fairly well. I think it, the... The electric effect or energy effect looks very nice. And um, when I have this figure on display, I always kind of display her like this. I think maybe, if anything, that uh, maybe the energy could spread out a little better. It would it would be nicer. Because right now, it's it's very thin, the, uh, you know, the direction that it goes. So that could be something that, you know, could have been a little better on this. But in general, uh, I prefer this figure over the other two. So here's Diamond's Gozer, and um, out of the three of these, I like this one the least. Like, I dislike this one so much, I actually sold it, but then I bought it again just for the purpose of this review, because I figured, well, uh, I might as well pick one up just so I could talk about it more during the Major Manifestation section. Plus, 
buying one in package helped during the packaging uh, category. So, there you go. I think this one is just very, like, uninspired and just kind of boring. She's just very straight, up and down. There's, like, no dynamic to her body. Her uh, articulation, of course, is better than NECA's, so you can move her around. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like all the other NECA figures, her feet are, like, way too small. And, like, you can get her to stand, but it's it's a little tricky. She topples over quite a lot, and you just kind of have to play around with a, a, just a lot to get her to stand in place. It's just very bland, and even though you have the bubbles and you have the nice texture, it just doesn't stand out as much. It's not as striking as the NECA one. And, you know, it's just, you know, she's got the pink body, which she kind of does in the film, and there's just, like, a, a darker pink highlight, like, sprayed in certain spots. And, you know, like, the, the brighter color on the bubbles should make them stand out more, but I don't know. There's just something very flat about the whole thing. There's an, a lot of nice texture on her back, so that's cool. Like, you have all these different, like, veiny kind of lines and all these other bubbles. You know, stuff like that looks cool. But, like, in the front here, like, one thing I really dislike about this figure is the way that her shoulders are built up. And I understand why they did it. They did it because they wanted bubbles on top of the arms. But that meant that they, you know, made it look like she has shoulder pads where these are, should be her shoulders. And that pushed these arms down so the arms don't come out of her shoulders in the right spot. They come out a little lower. And it just looks strange. It does not, it's, it's, it's not good. Now here's what I think is the worst aspect about this toy. It's the head. The head is like way too big for her body. It just looks gigantic. And uh, when it's put on like this, like, you know, it, it looks like she has no neck. It looks like her head is collapsing into her shoulders. And like, you know, I don't know. Was this a mistake that like some of her jawbone is sticking out here? There's, there's just something very off about it. It doesn't look like the actress in the film. Um, you know, it kind of looks a little better if you're looking at a three-quarter view or a profile view. But still, it's like, they really did a disservice to this, uh, this figure. And you can kind of make it look a little better. Oh. Lost the head almost. Right? If you put, if you pull the head off, right? And you place it on the neck, but don't push it down on the actual ball joint. It can appear a little better, like, proportionally from the head, the neck, and the body. So that looks a little better. But, you know, you got a wobbly head. But still, I think that would be, you know, a better option. Another thing, too, is that the, the paint on this is pretty bad, I think. I think that, like, um, the, like, the, uh, what do you call that? The eyeliner? The, <laughs> for, on, next to the eye, you know, you have, like, this kind of a little bit of bright red underneath her eye. I guess it's the eyeliner, right? It just looks very thin and very sloppy, and it kind of bleeds out underneath her eyes. So it looks kind of very boring and just kind of messy. Like, it doesn't look like it was done well. The eye color is okay, but I don't know. It's... this is not that great. They should have made this... the color of the eyeliner a lot darker. So then it... I don't know. It, like, made the eye stand out more. Maybe make the eyes a little brighter, you see? You can't... can't keep the head on there like that. put it all the way and she looks like you know what happened to her neck so they also provided a second head so that you could make her show her teeth like what was the purpose of this second head like you know NECA at least decided to go out and give her that like huge like yelling face or hissing or whatever she's doing in the film but this is just like kind of like a waste of plastic because like the it just it doesn't look anywhere, like, what was the point? There, This is hardly any difference whatsoever. Um, yeah, like, this was, this was not a good idea. The diamond figure also comes with a set of extra hands, but these are pretty much worthless, like... Was this worth it? 
No. You know, maybe this would have done better if they would have given her, like, some kind of effects or something like that. But they didn't include any kind of energy effects with her. Like, what is the... It's just barely closed a little bit. Like, what a waste. And, like, I don't know. Like, just in general, her arms always stick out like this. You can't put them down. You can't straighten them. They're always just like she's wearing... She's like the kid from A Christmas Story. Her arms are always up. She can't put them down. And I don't know. The articulation is okay, but, like, you're not going to be able to do too much. I don't know. Like I said, this is this is my least favorite out of all three. So up next we have the Hasbro Gozer, and um, I think this one is better than the Diamond one, but I don't know. It still just seems so bland. I don't know if it's just because Gozer has a difficult design to capture. Um, like I said, there's something about her in the movie that feels imposing, um, and this is just kind of, I don't know, it just looks like like a, a woman in a pink bodysuit. <laughs> like, it just doesn't look anything special or uh, threatening. So, like, the articulation is better on this. You have all these different cuts. And you actually have, unlike all the other Diamond Ghostbuster figures, she has a, a crunch in her stomach. So that's cool. Um, you can get into some pretty decent different poses, but, you know, you're never going to get her in any kind of pose like this. Like... Like, that's just impossible. You're never going to get her to be, you know, a, a nimble little minx. So, I think sometimes, like, the elbows look a little weird. Like, they're too fat right at the elbow part. So, it kind of, I don't know. It doesn't work the best for me. Um, like I said, the whole, the sculpt is pretty decent. Although, this kind of makes it, the way that it's too consistent here it kind of appears like she's wearing a scarf rather than just having like some little bubble things one thing i will say though is if you look at pictures of her in the film and you compare the the bubbles on her body and where they're all placed they actually do match up pretty well with the movie maybe not so bad much on the shoulders but um looking in the front they did a good job of kind of copying that i don't think the likeness is there for this one um, but it's probably a little better than Diamond's. I don't know. It's, I don't know why toy companies cannot, like, do women toys well. They always, they always have such a hard time. At least Hasbro has been doing better with their Marvel Legends, but man, when they first started, do you remember that Emma Frost figure that came out? That was awful. But, um, you know, I wish that they would have given her more of a snarl or something like that. She doesn't really necessarily look threatening, I guess. And again, like, I, I think that they need to make the eyeliner a lot darker to really help um, make the eyeball stand out. Like, when you watch that movie, her eyeballs are, like, blood red. They are very deep, and it's kind of, you know, it's weird looking. And I feel like the eyeliner is very, very dark. You know, it might be just a lighting thing, I don't know, but um, it looks a lot better. I think one of the weirder aspects of Hasbro's Gozer are the the feet you know she's supposed to be wearing high heels she wears high heels in the film but they like filled in this part here so it's just kind of weird looking not to mention i think that the ankle is like too far down in the foot so it kind of makes her feet look even shorter than they should be i feel like they should be moved out down a little bit if anything i kind of feel like it looks like she has like miss piggy feet like she almost has like hooves Hasbro at least had the decency, unlike Diamond, to uh, provide extra hands with her that uh, actually did have an energy effect. So that's great. And um, I don't know, these ones might be a little better than the NECA ones, just because they spread out a little further than them. If you look at her here, it looks like a lot more like the movie, I think. Um, the way that they are, just how they spread out further than the NECA ones. And then, you know, if you come from behind and look at this shot, uh, you know, this looks good. This kind of matches up very well with the movie. So that's pretty great. The energy effect on the Hasbro figure uh, does kind of weigh her down a lot. So you're probably going to either have to get a stand or try to 
you know, lean her back a little bit so she doesn't fall forward all the time. So uh, the NECA does a, a better job with that one. Like, if you look at these, if you look at the Gozers next to the Ghostbusters, um, you know, this one just, like I said, it's very uninspired and boring. Um, this one is serviceable, but I just like that one so much more. I think it fits in with the 7-inch figures. And then, the, you know, like, um... I mean, she's a she's a Babylonian god. I, I mean, a Sumerian god. So, like, I, I could imagine her being a little bigger than the Ghostbusters, even though she might not necessarily appear that way in the film. So, f just for the sake of her being, like, you know, like a, a threat to them, I don't mind her being a 7-inch figure, you know, mixed in with these guys. I mean, in some ways, I think that this one's maybe a little too small. Or, like, even if she was going to be smaller, they should at least give her, like, a... You know, the angry face, the the scary gozer face. That way, she at least appears like, you know, the, go the Ghostbusters have to worry a little bit about her. Um, but in general, if I had to pick a gozer that, like, you know, other than NECA, I would pick the Hasbro one over the Diamond one. The Diamond one is just not great. Up next, we have the Scourge of Carpathia himself. Uh, Vigo! And, um... You know, we've had two Vigos. We had a Vigo with Maddie, which was, you know, it was pretty unsurprising. How come they could get Vigo, but they couldn't get Gozer? I, what happened there? I, I don't know. But anyways, we had a Vigo with Maddie, and we had a Vigo with Diamonds. And uh, I don't have the uh, the Maddie Vigo anymore because I decided to get rid of them because as soon as I got this Diamond Vigo, I was like, well, this is this is a lot better than the, the Maddie figure. But don't worry, because I can talk about the Maddie and the Diamond figure and kind of show how they stood next to each other. Because even before I made videos, I used to like to take uh, pictures comparing the new action figures with the old action figures. And uh, Vigo is one of them that I did that with. So um, I think the Maddie figure was well done, but it's not as good as the Diamond figure. Both suits are very close to the film, but uh, the likeness is just not there. Uh, I believe at the time, Maddie said that they couldn't get the likeness rights for the guy who plays Vigo. So uh, their toy, I think, appears more like the painting that he's, you know, based off of. Or um, I also kind of think he looks like David Leisure um, and not like that dude in the movie. Like, look at him. He, like, I, I don't have a picture of David Leisure, but look David Leisure up and he looks he looks a lot like him. I think the profile is a little weird too, like his forehead is very high and it kind of unnaturally slopes back too much at the top instead of looking like a normal human skull. Uh, I don't know. I think, it, I think it was good and I liked him. He did like, he was bigger than the Ghostbusters, which was good, but you know, I just think the diamond did him better. I think one of the best things about Maddie's Vigo is you got this cool lenticular uh, picture with him. That's the painting of Vigo. And you know, you turn it and he disappears. And if you turn it around, you have the uh, the picture of the Ghostbusters, just like the end of the film. Fantastic. So I think the uh, the Diamond Select Vigo just looks awesome. Like, I like all the folds and the wrinkles in his clothes. Even up here, you have like very nice texture and uh, more wrinkles than the Maddie one does. The Maddie one is was a little flat in some spots. But, you know, there's just so many ruffles and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, I think he looks great um, from front to back. I never understood what, like, Vigo's suit anyway. Like, I guess it's medieval? I don't know. But it's uh, cool. You got the boots, and uh, they're pretty well done. And even if you look on the, the cloth of his pants, there's, like, there's a lot of texture in there. There's actually, it's not just um, smooth. There's lots of nice little things in there. Like all the rivets and stuff like that, or the, that all looks cool. The belt, the spikes. I really like the, uh, you know, the skulls on this. The gloves look good. There are the gauntlets. And I think the diamond beat Maddie in the likeness a lot. Like, I think that actually looks like the dude in the film. Um, you do have, like, a little bit of a weird thing going on here where the hair looks a little bit like it's kind of floating. 
but in general you can overlook that and I think it's good. Even the paint job on the face here looks a lot better than most of their Ghostbuster toys I have. Like, Diamond had so many sloppy paint jobs, but uh, the details on this guy's face are actually very clean and they look very nice. Slime Baller Ray also came with an extra, you know, demon Vigo head that looks cool. And, you know, you could probably, I guess, pop this off and put that on there so that he could look like he does in the movie. But, um, I just can't ever pull off any of these. Like, I, I could pull Gozer's head off just fine, but I haven't been able to pull off Slime Blower Ray's head or Vigo's head to see how this fits on top of there. His articulation is pretty good. Um... You can get a lot, a lot of movements in different spots, except for the head. You know, the head doesn't really look up or look down, but it, you know, you could turn it from side to side. Um, I don't know. Like, what are you going to really do with him anyways? He just kind of stands there and looks intimidating. So, you know, you're not going to be, like, trying to pose him like Spider-Man or anything like that. Now, I think that this is kind of a bummer, but look at him. He's, like, almost smaller than Bill Murray. Like, he appears... He shouldn't appear this small next to him. He should be bigger and uh, more imposing. So that's kind of a bummer. But, uh, you know, so like, I don't know. That's not cool. However, you can also mix them. And this was why I sold the, the, the Maddie one. Because I think you can mix them with the, the dime, or sorry, the Maddie figure and now the Hasbro figures. Um... So that works out well, because, like I said, I think Vigo should be big. I think he should be, like, you know, larger than the Ghostbusters, and I think that this is a better mix. So out of Matty, Hasbro, and Diamond, who wins the best major ghost, the major manifestations? Well, you know, Matty apparently, you know, is a no-show here because I sold Vigo, but I think that if Matty would have been able to do Gozer, I think that they would have did... A good job. I think Maddie would have done a nicer job than Hasbro did and probably Diamond did. So, um, you know, I think it's a shame that they didn't get a chance to do it. And, you know, I might have felt more inclined to keep the Vigo if they would have also had Gozer, if you could have had both a matching set of the main Ghostbuster villains. Hasbro so far has not done a Vigo. You know, if they get to Vigo, they could potentially win this category, but they haven't yet. So, in my opinion, the winner of the Major Manifestations is... Diamond. Um, Diamond wins mostly because they have both. <laughs> like, that's, that's the biggest thing here. Um, like I said, I think that their Gozer is not great. I think it's very boring and just... There's so many problems. The shoulders, the face, and all that kind of stuff. But the Vigo manages to make up for that, I guess. And you get both of them. Like, you get both. So that's good. Um, if Hasbro releases a Vigo and does a good job on it, then, you know, this might change in the future where I would think that Hasbro has won the best major manifestations. And, uh, holy crap! We're done with every category. Can you believe it? So, who won in the end? Well, if you add all 16 categories up and you figure it out, uh, looks like Maddie won the most. And, uh... How do I feel about that? Well, I agree. Personally, I love the Maddie line. Uh, I've, I've always preferred the Maddie line. But obviously, they have a lot of faults. You know, they're not perfect. No Ghostbusters line is perfect. Um, I made all these categories so I could be as objective as possible. I tried to be as unbiased as I could and look at each category separately so that, you know, it wasn't just like, well, I prefer Maddie because Maddie this. Like, I tried to really show... Um, you know, I guess I could have proven myself wrong if Diamond or Hasbro won more categories. So, um, you know, that's, that's interesting. But, um, you know, if Maddie, if they could have produced Janine, Gozer, and the Terror Dogs, I don't even think it would be a question for most people. I think most people would have just been like, yeah, Maddie made the best Ghostbuster line. Like, this would be really hard to top. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's a bummer because, like, Money obviously was an issue for that line. Like, that that was the whole thing. All the time, they were just always like, you know, we don't have enough money for tooling. You have to buy this so we can do this. And I think that really turned off a lot of Ghostbuster fans. And, you know, that's, that's a shame. Because 
Ghostbuster fans are not like Ninja Turtle fans. You cannot just keep on producing variants of the Ghostbusters and have people interested. Like the Ninja Turtles, you can put them in all different wacky outfits or change their faces and people will love it. You like, you know, produce too many Ghostbusters and people aren't as interested. They're more, I think people are more interested in ghosts. So, I don't know. That's where Maddie failed. If Maddie, like I said, Maddie could have won hands down. And I think everybody would agree to that if they would have hit those figures and got things sorted out. Maddie really tried to cover as many pieces of equipment and ghosts that they possibly could. And I think that's great, you know. Um, the ghosts may not be as detailed as diamonds, but I like that they included so many of them in the line. And I like that they have translucent plastic and the colors are all bright and they look cool, you know. You got the Scolari brothers, you got Cinema and Subway Ghost. Like, all that is great. Like, like, I need more ghosts to make me happy as a Ghostbuster fan because it's boring just setting up your Ghostbusters and, you know, just having them stand on your shelf by themselves. Like, that's not cool. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of boring. So, um, you know, at least Maddie, when they, they, they at least gave you a Slimer right off the bat, too. Like, you got Egon and you got Slimer. So even though Slimer goes back and forth between being a good ghost and a bad ghost, you still had a ghost that you could set him up with and interact with. That was great. I feel like all the Maddie figures should have had a companion ghost that worked that way. And, you know, after Slimer came out right in the beginning, it wasn't for another year that we got a second ghost. It took a year to get the Subway ghost. And, you know, like, I, I just wish that they could have kept on putting them out, just like the original real Ghostbusters line had. And, um, you know, I mean, I would have preferred standalone ghosts, more detailed ghosts that, you know, maybe had more articulation, especially the Scolari brothers, but... Come on, you can't beat that they had so many ghosts in the line. Uh, the diamond line is cool, but I also kind of hate it. <laughs> the articulation and the feet and the goopy face paint and the fact that they just barely hold their equipment and you can't put the, the, the wands on the packs that well. And um, the equipment is the same size as the Maddie figure's equipment. Just really puts me off. Like, I... They have some cool things going on, but at the same time, like I said, I just do not like a lot of what that they, that they had to offer. Um, sure, they had more side characters, but side characters to me are not as interesting as the ghost. I could get I could get into side characters just as long as you're pumping me with a bunch of ghosts. And you know, I mostly bought this series the series out of habit. You know, like. I wasn't even going to buy it because I was happy with the Maddie line at first, but then I was like, you know, I'll give it a shot and I'll buy them. And, um, you know, of course, in the long run, I'm happy with it because I got the awesome rooftop diorama. You know, that's great. But uh, I don't know. I was very frustrated every time I'd pull a figure out of the package. And I don't know. It wasn't the best thing. And I like, you know, every one of those figures is like 25 bucks a piece. And I don't think the, the diamond line was that popular among casual people. Because um, I bought Waves 1 through 5 at my local comic book store. And uh, after that, my local comic book store wouldn't buy any more. Because they would have to buy them by the case. And a case of each wave consisted of, um, you know, you got three characters per wave. And each case had two of each character. So you got six figures all together. And I'd buy my three. And the other three figures in the case would just sit on their shelf. And they would never sell. Nobody else wanted to buy them, and um, all of them just sat there for years until eventually um, somebody else bought the comic book store, and they decided to raffle the whole collection of Ghostbusters for like $5 a raffle ticket or something like that. So I did try to win just because, but uh, I didn't win. Um, at least though, on the positive side... Um, in order to get two terror dogs, it was really, really easy for me. So I had to buy waves 6 through 10 on Amazon. And that was like so frustrating too because a lot of them would come late or like um, like very, very late. Late to the point where I'd even think I was going to get them. The Diamond Select line, for me, got really good when they turned to real Ghostbusters. Um, I feel like there's something about the heads of the real Ghostbuster figures or just something about them that proportionally looks a lot better 
than how the movie figures did. Maybe it's because the likenesses are based off of cartoon characters instead of actual real people that uh, I think in general they looked a lot nicer. I don't know. Maybe that's just like me. But I thought the real Ghostbusters was like a huge step up and then like ended right when it began. It was, it was such a bummer. So that leaves us with Hasbro and the future of Ghostbuster figures. At this moment, we're in February of 2021, and we haven't heard anything yet on Wave 2 of their series. It, uh, it worries me a little bit, but it could just be because they're waiting for Afterlife to, you know, finally get released in theaters, and then they'll go strong with the line. Who knows? Um, I think Hasbro is making an effort to appeal to Ghostbuster fans, which is great. They're re they're uh, re-releasing the old real Ghostbuster toys from back in the day. So that's awesome. You know, unlike the Turtles and He-Man, reissues are pretty much non-existent for the Ghostbusters. Like, you had that run way back in the day and nothing until now. So it's awesome to see real Ghostbuster figures back in a store. And you can find them in stores, which is great, too. And uh, you also have the, the, uh, the Ectotron and the Ecto-1. And also, you have the amazing Neutrona wands. I mean, that thing is freaking awesome. Like, like I'm more impressed with that than the Maddie wands. And then you have the Plasma series. And, uh, you know, I haven't been able to tell how well this line is selling in stores. Um, you can still find a lot of the figures on the pegs. Sometimes you go in and they don't have many. So I don't know. Are, is it selling well? What has been the general reaction to this line? I, I, I just don't know. I guess once we start seeing Waves 2 or whatever their plans are for the future, we'll know if the Plasma series was a, a failure or a, um, if it succeeded in doing what they were hoping. I'm trying to be optimistic, but at the same time, I kind of know how Hasbro is because I do buy some Marvel Legends toys. I usually buy just the Spider-Man figures. And, uh, you know, they'll give you really obscure characters. You know, only some characters only comic book fanatics like myself really know. Like, do you know the Incredible Frogman? Most people don't know who he is, or most people don't even care about him. So I think it's awesome that they can go deep into lines like that. But, you know, they'll also half-ass things a bit, especially the paint. The lack of paint on these Ghostbuster toys is such a bummer, especially on the proton packs and, you know, just the, the bodies. Like, I, I think their suits are very bright, and I don't like the pads and the very bright, you know, gloves and boots. But in general... You can still be happy with these toys, I think. I think if you missed Maddie and Diamond, they're still a, a good option. I think it's also a bummer how, like, lackluster their accessories are. Like, why wouldn't they give the Ghost Trap uh, a pedal? Like, that that's a huge mistake. And, like, even the, the Proton Stream isn't the best. And I think that, like, you know, Maddie succeeded because you had... I guess I think that Toy Guru was the brand manager at the time, and he seems like somebody who um, was a big Ghostbusters fan. So it seemed like he was kind of pushing it, steering it along in the right direction. You need a huge Ghostbusters fan in there to help push the line and kind of produce a bunch of stuff that, you know, they know that the fans will want because they're a fan and they want it. Um, to me, Hasbro seems a little more corporate and faceless um, than Maddie. It's like they sit around and they're thinking like, we know people like the ghost trap, so we'll include one. People won't care that there's no pedal. They'll just be happy for the box. We know because it's the ghost trap, you know, like they'll buy it. Um, they need that one person to take head of the project and be like, put a freaking pedal on this thing. Like you think, what are they supposed to do with this? Throw the trap at the ghost to knock them out? Um, it's like Trevor from NECA steering the TMNT toy line um, you know, you could tell that he really has a love for the brand. So he just keeps on pumping so much cool stuff into that toy line, like obscure, awesome Ninja Turtle stuff that you'd never think you'd see. Weird things from the cartoon, stuff that'll make your head explode. Um, he knows what Turtle fans want because he's a huge fan. If Toy Guru wasn't so interested, I don't think he would have gotten all those cool little extra things like the, uh, the tripod traps and, you know, all those other extra ghosts. It seems like Somebody had to be in there being like, you need to put this stuff in here. Otherwise, Ghostbuster fans are just going to, you know, drop this line. And I know that people like fans have a little bit of a, a mixed reaction with him. Like some people like him and some people like think that blame him for all the problems in the line because he was the face of the line. And anytime people were like, we need Gozer, he'd be the person being like, you know, we can't afford to do Gozer right now. 
he's kind of like that parent figure who was kind of telling everybody like, you know, like, ah, maybe you shouldn't expect this this Christmas this year. Uh, I don't know if Santa's going to be able to produce an iPad 11. So, um, like, but like, it does seem like he had a love for the series. And supposedly he had to hunt Bill Murray down on a golf course just to get his approval for the likeness. Like, that's crazy. And uh, I think, like, I missed that personal connection you had with Maddie. And I I wish that, you know, Hasbro would kind of do something like that. But, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see how things go. Out of all the stuff I've sold for my collection, the figures from Maddie are some of the bits and pieces that I regret the most. Like, you know, like I said, I'm kind of indifferent. Like, you sold the stuff to make room and, you know, you're happy about that kind of... And you, you can use that money to buy other stuff that's even better than that those things. But, like, in general, I did really like the line. So... I imagine probably some point in the future I'll end up rebuying all the stuff. Great. So at this time, I'm really excited to see what Hasbro does in the future. Like, I can't wait to see what they reveal. I hope that we get some new shots of some new figures this year. Hopefully we'll see the Scolari brothers or, you know, I guess Janine would be fine. But just give me more ghosts. I want some more ghosts. I think they, the amount of ghosts is important for the health of the Ghostbusters toy line. Also at this point, like, I'm kind of okay if they moved on from doing movie figures for a while. Like, you know, it was really exciting when it first began in 2009, when we first, you know, started getting these Maddie figures. It was like, finally, for the first time after 24 years or something like that, we're finally, or 25 years, we're finally getting movie Ghostbusters. But, you know, Ghostbuster movie toys are limited. You, you only have so many ghosts, and um, after that, it's just, you know... I don't know. It, like, once you get past making the four Ghostbusters, I would think that the casual person doesn't care as much about, you know, Dana and Lewis. Maybe Lewis is in a Ghostbusters costume, but, you know, Janine, stuff like that. Like, people, some people are really calling for that stuff, and I would just think that the general public is not interested in picking up a Walter Peck figure. So it might just be, like, a personal bias of mine or something like that, that, uh, you know, I just kind of think that, the majority of people wouldn't be interested in Janine or Walter Peck. You know, maybe I'm completely wrong. Uh, but, like, I don't know. At this point in time, I would be more excited if they moved on to doing real Ghostbuster toys. Like, somebody needs to pick up the real Ghostbusters license and just run run wild with it. Like, like I think that that is, like, the future. I could imagine... I, a lot of times I think that that would be more prosperous and successful than a movie line. And, uh, you know, I don't think maybe Hasbro could do it. I think that it's cool that they're doing their reissues, but, like, in, like you'd have to go to, like, NECA, where NECA is doing their Ninja Turtle line, and they are doing things so, like, so cartoon accurate. It's crazy. It's almost to, like, an excessive degree that they are tune accurate. And, you know, that's just great, especially if you're a Ninja Turtle cartoon fan. And I think some company needs to do that with the real Ghostbusters. You know, give me the four guys, then give me Janine, and just, like, dive into ghost after ghost after ghost. Like, the Boogeyman, Sam Hain, the Grundle, Gregor, um, slimed versions of the Ghostbusters from the episode Doctor Doctor. I love that episode. The Ghost from Doctor Doctor. Hob and a Garrett. Hob and a Garrett. <laughs> Cthulhu, the Cthulhu Demons. The People Busters, The Sandman, Possessed Egon, Egon in his containment unit outfit, Blue Slimer, the, the, the demon from Mrs. Sh Faversham's attic, Proteus. Like, give me some night game players. Give me Blackie. I love that ghost. Like, that is an amazing looking ghost. And that, just that episode is just an amazing episode. And, uh, you know, that's... Why, I also think that the Diamond Select Real Ghostbuster series, you know, was a bummer because they obviously knew people liked those ghosts. They produced a bunch of those ghosts in the Mini Mates. And then, you know, when that line ended, like, I was, I was, I was pretty uh, bummed out about the whole thing. Also, could you imagine if Super 7 did, like, a line of toys like they're doing with the Ninja Turtle Ultimates? If you had real Ghostbusters Ultimate figures, and, you know, they might not be cartoon accurate based off the cartoon, 
But could you imagine if they like just took the original guys and then took the pack and ghosts and like made the pack and ghosts bigger and had more access or like articulation and stuff like that? Kept the translucent plastic like, man, that would be awesome. Like, could you imagine if they took like some of the, the bigger ghosts, like the bug eye ghosts and, you know, doubled him in size? Yeah, sure. It cost you 300 bucks. But like, man, that would be awesome. I just don't know if Hasbro has it in them to like produce that kind of line. You know, I could be wrong. And, you know, by all means, Hasbro, prove me wrong. Like, I want to be wrong. I want I want you to blow my mind with awesome Ghostbuster stuff in the future, you know? And, you know, it is it is really exciting. Like, like you have this, the, all this cool Ninja Turtles stuff happening. You have all this cool Thundercat stuff happening. There's no excuse why there can't be a bunch of awesome Ghostbuster things happening right now. And, like, Hasbro has begun doing some, some awesome Hasbro things. Uh, but, you know, we could always use more. So, thanks for watching. And uh, if you watched all parts, one through four, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, if you were thinking about picking up any of these lines, I hope that this helped you out in some way. You know, I'm sure you probably think some of the stuff I said was wrong. That's fine. Let me know what you think I was wrong. Let me know what you agreed with. That's all cool. Thanks for watching. Now we're finally done with the Ghostbusters. And, uh, you know, this took forever. This took weeks to put all these videos together. So, man, what a crazy time. And, like, I, you know, I figured that, like, I know a, a ton of people aren't going to watch this. But, you know, I just kind of did a lot of this for myself, too. I was like, you know, I love all these Ghostbuster lines. I want to see them all together and figure this, this stuff out. So I'm glad you uh, stuck around and watched it all with me. So have a good one.